everybody. It's Henry and Mowers and Blowers. Good afternoon. That's right. It's 1.30 in the afternoon. And uh, I don't know, I just kept on sleeping and sleeping and sleeping <laughs> until like 11.30 or so. And I just moseyed on out here. It's a beautiful day. I pretty much wasted the entire morning in bed, you know. But that's okay. Sleep is good. Anyway, yesterday, as you saw, huh? We had a little bit of uh, some snow flurries and it got really cold last night, down to like 33 degrees. It was crazy. Like I said, uh, New York weather is very unpredictable. Today, I've got my John Deere outdoors because it's such a nice day. This was my old uh, umbrella from the backyard, you know, the sun thing. And we had that big wind, just went, whoosh, flew right off. So the wife threw it out. I picked it out of the garbage because, hey, I could use it for one session of uh, collecting crap, you know, it's perfect because today I'm going to be working on unseizing this deck. As you guys know, yesterday I did the first test drive on this John Deere. Uh, I took it out for a ride, runs great. Hesitated a little bit, but then I changed the fuel filter and uh, just in, in thoughts of maybe something was clogged in the fuel filter. It was the original one, right? So change the fuel filter just in case. We'll see what happens over the next uh, few days where I actually you know, have it running and driving and see if it hesitates anymore. It's a fuel delivery issue. Uh, I didn't change any of the fuel lines, so maybe the fuel lines were bad or something like that. But uh, Or maybe some of the debris might have gotten back into the carburetor. I could drop the bowl and check out the bowl and see if there's any debris in there. But in the meantime, uh, I did try to engage the PTO manually, and it's just it just springs into place. Not, no arms, tension arms are moving, right? So I think everything down here is seized. The pulleys, the spindles the blades, um, pretty much everything is seized. So I'm going to I'm gonna attempt to take the mower deck off today and try to unseize everything, get it running smoothly, and put it back on again. Uh, in the meantime, I just put a little bit of ATF in the rear tire over there because I, I pumped air into it, and this morning it was flat. So that one, I don't know if it's a slow leak. It might be a fast leak, you know? This front one here is good. The other side has a slow leak. Uh, I pumped it up yesterday, but it looks like it lost a little bit of air. So I'm going to put some ATF in that one too. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. Um, but very popular um, video yesterday on this repair. Uh, I had over 700 views overnight, which to me is a record. I've never had that many views uh, overnight before. And a lot of comments from my subscribers. I appreciate that. Um, shout out to Tim Meyerman of uh, Kennewick, Washington, who bought a sticker. OG1. Thank you for the support. I appreciate it. And uh, we're going to get to work right away. Short monologue today. Just going to cut to the chase, man. Get the deck off.
So as you guys saw during time lapse, it really wasn't very difficult to remove the uh, mower deck. The mower deck was actually very easy. It had about uh, three um, arc clips on each side with a spring cable that attaches to the uh, tensioner arm pulley. So it really, really wasn't hard to remove, right? Um, these brackets, you want to remember that you want to disconnect the top part so that it, leave, it stays here instead of removing the bottom part. Because if you removed the uh, top part, right, it would hang. And if it hangs, when you pull the deck out, it'll get caught. So it's more easier if you leave this, these hangers right over here. Uh, when I got the deck off, everything was frozen solid. The spindles, the pulleys, the uh, idler pulleys too, they were all seized completely. Blades wouldn't move at all. But then uh, after I tried to remove the bottom blades off of the spindles, right, it wouldn't budge. It's like rusted shut. So instead, I removed the uh, pulleys from the f top. As you saw, it also has a mulch cover on it too which is the first time I've actually ever seen a John Deere one with a mulch cover, which is a good bonus. So as you see over here, right, this, I managed to remove the top nut, right? Took some uh, penetrating oil. And this stuff I use religiously, as you guys know. This is penetrating oil from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. So I just sprayed some of that stuff, let it soak for a bit. And then um, what happened was I removed the nut successfully with a breaker bar, got the, got the pulley off. Once I got the pulley off, there's a little groove here where there's a nut where you can stick a 9 in here and you can kind of move it back and forth, moving back and forth. And then I, st I thought to myself, well, it's just the uh, shaft that's in the bearing, right? This thing was covering it like that, right? And so I wanted to just bang the, the uh, shaft down, right? to let it be loose from the bearing. So you put the nut back onto the shaft, right? And then I took a sledgehammer and I slightly banged it, you know? So then the shaft came loose from the bearing and now it's just dropped down. So when it's dropped down, you have space. And when you have space, right, you can put penetrating oil right in between the space so it gets lubricated. So now both uh, shafts on the spindles are completely free and I'm just letting the uh, penetrating oil do its magic. So it looks like we're going to be successfully uh, able to um, get these spindles to work again. And uh, that's maximum stokage, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to let it sit for a little bit. And I'll, oh, also, but there's more. I have loosened up the uh, tension arm for the deck. So now it moves freely. Um, there's a little hole over here where the spring cable goes to. So when you engage the manual PTO arm, it pulls the cable and the spring, and this arm moves that way. It moves very easily too, see? So this is what tightens the belt to allow the blades to move once you engage the manual PTO. So I'll let it soak for a little bit, and uh, we'll come back and see if I can put this all together again and have this deck working again. Of course, I do still have to go get some paint because I'm going to blow this all out, and then, as you can see, there's a lot of rusty spots. But the deck is in good shape. There's no rot. So that's good news. It really wasn't very difficult to do. So I've been at this for like two hours. It's almost like once you start poking into it, right, layers and layers just keep coming off. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you, where is that thing? All right, watch. So this scraper thing that I got, right, I've been using this scraper. 
It's a grass scraper for the bottom of a deck. I got it from John Ayall from Olympia, Washington. Thanks a lot, man. I've been using this thing a lot, you know? So, uh, I'm trying to peel off all the rusted paint that's been on that deck. And I've been doing it for quite a while. I'll show you what I've been doing. But check this out, fellers. As you guys saw before, this thing was completely seized. It wouldn't move. None of the pulleys moved. The blades you couldn't move them. None of that, right? So I used a lot of this red and tacky spray grease from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products, as well as my penetrating Earl throughout everything. It still didn't loosen things up as well as I wanted it. So finally I had to remove the spindles and the pulleys and pulled out the blades. And I actually used my vise that I got from Nate Wagner from Minnesota, right? And uh, I sharpened the blades when I took them off. Now check this out, fellas. I know, it looks like a rusted piece of crap, I know. But check this out, are you ready? I couldn't move it before. Ooh, is that amazing or what? This one's not as good, but it's pretty good. And the blades are sharp. So I've been using that scraper, scraping off all the um, layers and layers of paint. And uh, the more I scrape, the more comes off, you know? Also, look at that. That spring's going to be able to hold on to here, and once I engage the PTO, it'll tighten the belt that way. Belt is routed correctly, and it moves. It's uh, This stuff is on the bottom, so it's catching. But look at that. So, um, look, this thing is so badly rusted, right, that I don't think spray paint is going to do it unless I first primer the whole thing, you know. Um, I was kind of thinking about just getting that the acrylic Rust-Oleum yellow paint and brush it on because you can brush it on very thick and when it cures it's like a very thick layer of uh, paint and uh, while you're going to see some brush marks I think it covers up the rust and protects it better, you know. So when I was, uh, when I was finished with this I went over here and I started just, I took off the, uh, the foot pad, and there's just like all this crap down there. See? Look at all that crap. And um, I just kept on scraping and scraping, and the more I scraped, the more layers came off, and, and now it just looks like hell, you know what I mean? I'm going to show you guys what I'm doing over here. So look, if you look, if I just do some scraping, it just keeps going and going, because see? There's bubbles here. And then over here, you just go like that. It just keeps going and going. So, I mean, I almost don't want to keep going and going because the more I go, the more I got to paint, you know? But I, I'm thinking about uh, getting green uh, brush-on paint too, just, you know, for the rust parts over here because when you brush it on, it's so thick with the brush. And when it's thick, it'll cover it up better because if you just spray it, you're going to see layers of this, you know, unless you primer it again. So look, you can get all these uh, little clips here for the deck, put them on the side here. This is the spring, by the way. Surprisingly, this cable is still in good shape, you know, and it rolls. So I'm going to take this pad off, see? So you have to pry it like this. For the tabs, not to be broken. You could just yank it up really fast, but sometimes you'll break it. I guess I'll just try this. Screw, flathead screwdriver work too. There you go, see? Tabs are all intact, right? Don't break them. And just look at this. Holy. Crazy, right? You could definitely tell this thing was in the rain, in the elements, for years upon years. And that's the major part of this uh, project that makes it difficult. Not so much me getting the engine running, even though rust 
ruts contributed to why the engine didn't run, you know? But uh, as you guys saw, it only took me like two episodes to get the engine running. We were driving this thing on the street after three episodes. And I have a feeling that the rust and the paint and the deck is going to take another two episodes to do because uh, I I'm merely just scraping the surface. <laughs> uh, if you know what I mean. On getting this together, you know. And... Um, it's going to take a while because i got to make a trip, obviously, to Home Depot to get the paint. But I think after I get that done, I'll be able to make this thing at least presentable, you know. Uh, sh surely it's not going to be a... Um, surely it's not going to be a complete renovation. And stop calling me Shirley. But um, I just want to make it presentable for sale, you know what I mean? This is probably going to fetch maybe se six, seven hundred, I want to say. Maybe. I know it doesn't look like it right now, but I tell you, I could probably get about seven hundred for it because my last John Deere LA-105 got me seven hundred. And that was only after... And, and I sold it in the winter, I think, you know, so... This is going to be covered up anyway from the foot pad, so I'm not really too concerned about it so much. But I nevertheless want to get some green paint, that heavy oil-based acrylic paint, Rust-Oleum on here. Nice thick layer of it. See what I'm saying here? Just a bag of worms, man. A can of worms. I'm just opening it up right now. See? Another can of worms. What are you going to do? You got to do it, right? So, uh... This gives John, my friend John Pruss over at Turning Wrenches, an opportunity to catch up on me. I'm a little ahead of him because I don't think his engine runs yet. Not that it's a race, but it kind of is a little race because we started around the same time. Let's see who get. Let's see who gets the um, the project finished first, me or John, because we both are working on identical identical uh, tractors. He's he started around the same time as I did on his uh, John Deere L100, but he has to do an engine swap. Theoretically, John, if you already have a working engine, you should have been ahead of me by now because all you have to do is put the engine on and you're good to go. You know what I mean? But yeah, he's working on the same identical tractor as me. Identical! Identical. New neighbors gave me a game. They had two sets. I know my son and daughter like to play with it. The thing with the beanbag thing, I don't know what it's called. And it cleaned up a little bit. So next steps. This ought to take two episodes as it is. You know what I mean? So. This gives John an opportunity to catch up to where I am because I'm pretty sure that his tractor is not nearly in bad a shape as mine, you know? I should be able to get this done in a couple of episodes. Uh, I gotta whip out my power washer, get this to the backyard somehow, and then power wash the whole thing because I want to clean the deck and the body of the tractor before I paint it, right? So the only way to really clean it up is with a power washer. So uh, this will give me an opportunity to start my power washer for the first time this year. So after I do that, I'm going to have to take a trip to Home Depot. 
get myself two or three cans of uh, black quick color paint. That's always useful whether I use it for this tractor or not. And I'm also going to get uh, yellow. I don't know. I haven't decided whether I want to get yellow spray paint or not. Because if I get yellow spray paint, I have to get primer too, right? Or I could just get a can of yellow and a can of green. Acrylic brush on Rust-Oleum, you know? Since we're not painting the whole tractor, I think that's probably what I'm going to do. If I was painting the whole tractor in the hood, the hood has to look beautiful without any brush strokes. But if you're just talking about the deck, you can get away with brush strokes, no big deal. And also touching up stuff is okay. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to get some green. I don't know if there's people manning the custom color booths over at Home Depot, but I'll bring like a couple of green chips with me, have them give me a, a pint of that green that they can match perfectly to the chips, right? And then I'll have the exact green to fill the rust spots around the body of the tractor. As for the yellow, I guess if I'm going to do that, I might as well bring some yellow chips as well. I've got plenty of it. So they can match exactly the color of the deck too. So I just brush that paint on, reinstall the deck, and I'm done! This kind of work is no fun. I don't like dealing with this work. As you also saw, uh, I had two tires that were slow leaks. The rear tire is actually a bigger leak than a slow leak. Put some ATF in both. Uh, I didn't take them off to spin them, but... Uh, We'll see what happens tomorrow. Thanks for joining me today on today's episode. This was episode four of my deck refurbishing. I'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers.